Hi, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hi, good evening everyone. How are we doing today? Uh, hi, good evening, Becca. How are hi, you today? Good evening. Very well, thank you. How are you too? Fine, thank you. How's the weekend been? It's been very well. Okay. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. It's our <laughs> pleasure, and we're so so appreciative of your time and everything and your thank knowledge. You. So we're looking forward Thank to for learning new things and um, every other thing involved. Thank you. Um, do you want us to go straight to it? We have about five people online now, or we should give them a bit more time. Or what do you think? Well, we I don't know. It depends on you, but I feel that we can just skip off so that. You know, thank God it's something that can be saved, so all right, then that's people fine. Come on to watch, yeah. All right, then perfect. We're going to it. So, good evening, everyone. And today good with evening. me, I have um, Becca Akinro Um, Becca is an enthusiastic registered mental health nurse. Um, she's also a cognitive behavioral therapy um, practitioner with over um, a year of, spe of experience in tele counseling. Yeah? in telecounseling yes, yes. and she's passionate about um providing about providing about provision of emotional um support to individuals to enable them um, attain um resilience so we're so happy to have you here today and uh, we can't wait to hear what you have for us it's yeah all. thank you very much yeah, you. i hope you can hear me well am i audible enough no. I said um, I asked if I was audible enough. Am I audible enough? Yes, you are audible. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Well, so we we'll just get right into it. So um, as Sally said, we we're talking about depression this evening and would we'll, um correct some of the misconceptions that we have about it. So yeah. depression is actually an interesting topic that it's something we 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 see everywhere you know, around us, but some of us do not recognize it. Do you understand? Mm, so true. in simple terms, in simple terms, depression is, is classified as a mood disorder. It's one of the mood mm -hmm. disorders, which, which, which can be defined as um, a condition where there is persistent low mood, low energy, lack of interest in previously mm -hmm. enjoyed activities. And this, mm. this, symptoms interfere with individuals daily activities so when it gets to that point that is when there is a problem so everyone has everyone experiences sadness at one point or another in life so that is not the same thing as depression so once it is persistent once an individual experiences it for for about two weeks then the person can be um diagnosed with depression so Although there are different types of depression, like uh, that's just like a basis. That's just one of the um, factors for um, having an initial diagnosis. So yeah. So you know, now that I've given a, a basic definition of what depression is, I would like I, there are so many misconceptions, there are so many misbeliefs that people have about it. You know, the very common one that I heard is that. If everyone everyone needs to be depressed at, at any point at one point or another in life and I'm like hello it's not a normal thing depression is not what people should go through 
Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not in normal sense. That term normal is to be corrected. It's not in normal sense. Whether the age or young or young adults, whatever age thing may be. So it's not what anyone should go through. So and it's what it's um it's a condition just like every other um disease condition that needs attention, professional attention. It's just like hypertension. But this mm-hmm. time it's um what is the organ that is affected is the brain. That is the central nervous system. So and it, it needs the same attention that hypertension, that diabetes needs to, to get better. So um, I have quite a good number of myths that I, I prepared to talk about some of the common ones that mm-hmm. are relatable. The first okay. one is um, depression is a normal part of aging process. Don't no, that's it. That, depression is a normal part of aging process. Like one, mm-hmm. one, once one is growing older, as one is getting older, one mm-hmm. should be um, prone to having depression, to having depressed mm-hmm. um, experiences. Do you understand? So it's, I would like to correct that by saying that depression is not a part of aging process. No matter how old an adult is, the person is not supposed to go through depression. The person is not supposed to. So, and how it can be identified is when an adult or um, an elderly person is persistently having sadness, periods of cyclical periods of sadness, low mood, lack of interest in previously experienced and previously enjoyed activities, and mm. um, change in appetite. Yeah, yeah. Changing up appetite and and the likes. So at that point, the the relatives, the family members should identify it. It's not, it's not a problem. Uh, sorry, it's a problem. It's not it's not um something that should be strange. That you know, at that point, mm. it should be identified, recognized as depression, and the person should be helped by taking to um a professional for help. So that's for that. The other one I have here is that depression. Um, depression do not affect children or adolescents. That is mm. so, so wrong. That is so, so wrong. True. We're, in a, we're in a time where there are so many, there are so many um, factors around children, about, around adolescents that can make them go into a feeling of sadness. Mm. For example, bully school, low grades at school. Maybe they don't have what this, they, they, um, some of the things that some of their um, colleagues in school has. And, you know, those, those are factors that can make a child feel sad. Those are yeah. factors that can make them go have low moods, yeah? And at this point, parents should not expect their children to automatically just snap out of it, like, hello, you'll be fine, don't worry. So what would be advised for parents at this point is they should, they should embrace the child, you know, identify the, the, what is causing the depression, what is causing that feeling. Of sadness. What is causing? Um, what is? Um, what is causing that that mood disorder that they are having? Then so that it should be um, treated because the the problem about it is that once it is left untreated, it becomes worse. It becomes a bigger problem. That's for that. True. The next one we have is that depression is a condition that would go on its own, like. <laughs> Do we expect hypertension to go without treatment? The same way we don't expect diabetes to go without treatment is the same way depression will not go without treatment. Do you understand? So depression mm-hmm. is is um a mental is a minor mental illness that needs that once treated, once identified early, especially and treated, the person will get better in a matter of weeks. And the person mm-hmm. is going to perform optimally in the society. Do you understand? So it should not be it should not be stigmatized as mental illness, this, that, because one of the um, one of the one of the implication of this is that the individual is going to suffer um, neglect, family neglect, societal neglect. They will, yeah, they, they are going to they are going to be exposed to um, biased treatments. Do you understand? And those 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 kind of experiences are not good for individuals that are going through that kind of illness because it makes them go into, okay, so imagine someone that's going to, that's battling with low self-esteem already and you're trying to, and is now getting, is now poorly treated in the environment by the family, 
some of them are, get, are going to be abandoned in the environment. You know, they feel, they feel down. It, it, makes them, it makes the condition get worse, literally. So the next one is that depression is a sign of weakness. Mm. <laughs> I heard that as well. <laughs> so, you know, yes, I've heard that at times, at times down on by, you know, suppose the depression is a sign of weakness. A, a lazy person is a person that is meant to be, be um, that will go depressed, someone that does not feel like doing something, you know. And which is not so good because I, I do not believe that anyone in a good state of mind who wants to just deliberately stay indoor or sleep excessively or decide not to eat or, you know, go through all those symptoms like every day. Do you understand? So it is yeah. wrong. It is wrong to, what I would say is that anyone, whenever you see someone around you that's experiencing that kind of symptoms, even though you can help the person, Refer the person to someone that can help, or mm. or don't make it worse. Don't don't make it worse. Don't try to. It's really dangerous. Don't try to make it worse because you don't know what you're exposing the person to. That is why um some people end up committing suicide. Some people end up using substances to cope with depression or to cope with any mental illness they have, which is not good enough. That is why we need to create more awareness like we're doing now because this is a, a beautiful platform. You know, mm. when we create awareness like this, people people tend to get to know that okay, this this is the way to identify this condition. Okay, wow, well, it is treatable. Oh, great, blah blah blah, like that. You know, mm. and when people are informed, it makes it makes life easy to live. It makes conditions easy to manage. You understand? Imagine when a family member, when literally almost everyone in the family are uh, equipped with, in, with enough information about a, a condition that one of their relatives is having, you know, everyone work hand in hand to, to help them. It makes the burden easier to, to, yeah. to bear. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's for that. So depression is not a depression is life. not a real illness. Yeah, that's that's also no, that's the next one I was going to. Depression is a real illness. Like you know, some people confuse depression with sadness. They confuse depression mm. with um with mood swing, you know, and the like. Like I said earlier, depression is a mood disorder. It's a mood disorder. There are so many mood disorders. But it is, when it's called depression, once it is persistent, anyone can feel sad from any circumstantial occurrences, like maybe grief, rainy days, um, any unpleasant experience can make anyone feel sad or, you know, but once it is persistent, once it's, it lingers for a long time, once it lingers for, in fact, for two weeks, because no one should feel sad for, for too long. Yeah. And once it, it lingers for too long and it starts to interfere with the person's daily activity, then there is a problem. Then it's so, yes, do you understand? So it is a real illness. It's just like saying, um, okay, I've used hypertension enough. <laughs> I've used the book. It's just like saying, um, Chronic liver disease is not a, is not an illness. Like, hello. So, and these are some of the these are some of the um, misconceptions that start some of the stigmas that has been that has been attached to mental illness. I feel that mental illness is being treated badly, honestly, because <laughs> you know, I missed all um, illnesses that that are there out there. People tend to shy away from mental illness they, they make it look like it's something so strange that should not be talked about meanwhile it is wrong because the the organs of the body when they are the old organs of the body have their functioning and malfunctions so this the only difference with these mental illnesses is the fact that it is the brain that is affected and once the brain is affected then the symptoms you know you don't expect the symptoms that that's related to the brain to be that which will be related to um to conditions related to the liver or the heart, do you understand? Or the skin. So it is a real. It's as real as any other disease condition you can imagine. You can think about all you've heard. So that's for that. And the next one is that depression only affects women. Mm. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> depression respects no gender. Exactly. <laughs> Knows nobody. Yeah, it respects all gender. It knows nobody. So you know, we um the environments have um made people believe that 
men should be strong. Men should mm. have, you know, there's, ah, yeah, man now, you know, should man up, snap out of it, you'll get better, don't worry, yeah, you'll get better, don't worry, it's just a matter of time. See, depression cannot go without treatment. Depression cannot go without treatment. It won't go because the, my owner wants me to leave. No, it won't go that way. So, that is why that is where the, the need to seek professional help comes in. So you when you seek help, it is treatable. It is very, very treatable with medications and psychotherapy. It is very treatable. So and it is there is nothing like um, a man should not be depressed. No. A man, men experience depression as much as women do. Although it is you know, women tend to express theirs more, they tend to talk more than men. And it's because of the of the environmental factor. It's because there's a painting that painted that men should be stronger. Men should be men should be not ex- express emotions, their emotions, and those are making it hard to um to deal with. Because that is why we have so many guys out there that are abusing substances. They're using them to cope with their emotional problems, and that is really a bad way to deal with it. You know, it. <laughs> I was I was in a conversation I think last week with TR and I was telling him that you know sometimes we can't totally eradicate alcohol I, I don't know I don't know if I'm permitted to say this but you know I feel that we just deceive ourselves by saying don't take alcohol don't do this don't do that so at this age I think that we can just advise people to take it resp- to take out um, those substances not not substances alcohol responsibly do not take it if you are if you have the tendency, if you have a mental illness trait in your family, if you have anything that can prone you to having mental illness, because the truth is that when you when you when you shun people from doing those things, they will hide them from you. They will do them, them secret, they will do them secretly. Yeah. And then when the problem comes, they'll still come back to you. You'll still be part of um, people that are going to bear the burden. Do you understand? So mm. the, the best way to cope or to deal with depression is not to use substances. As a man, because men go through that especially, you know, they, because there's nobody to talk to and I have to man up. So the only way to, to deal with the emotion is to fall back to substances, which is bad, which is not a good way. So you are a man. Yes, you, sh- you have emotions. You should, you, you should feel bad if everything happens. I don't know. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but, you know, just get the idea. If you're depressed, seek for help. You, you have the same right that women have. Do you understand? Depression respects no gender. Do you understand? So that's mm. for that. So the next one now is that, yeah, I heard, I've heard about this one that um, depression, um, antidepressants change people's personality. Personality. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. Antidepressants majorly, what most of them do, m- most of those group of drugs do is that they try they try to increase the the um the neurotransmitter of the brain that's that affects the mood that influence the mood do you understand I, i'm trying to break it down as, mm. as to become as simple as possible do you understand so that is what neurotransmitters do so that has no influence that has no influence on personality no medication has influence on mm. no antidepressant med- medication has influence on on one's personality. So the only thing it does is that it increases the rate of the neurotransmitters, that is the serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine in the brain to make the person, um, to regulate the mood and make the person function optimally. Literally, that's what they do. So there is nothing like, uh, it affects the mood, then it changes my personality, I won't be able to do this again, I'll become a moron, I've heard that too, <laughs> of my patients, and you know, we try to like, correct their misconception. It is wrong. It is not like that. So the next one on the page is okay, yeah, I've talked about, <laughs> yeah, you have to use the medication for the rest of your for life. For the rest of your life. People have that fear a lot. Lots of um, antidepressants are going to be used for a long time, but the truth is that once it is identified early enough, and it is, and the treatment is is started on time. It's a condition that can be treated in a matter of weeks. It can be treated in a matter of weeks, and once the person gets starts getting better, the dosage will start 
they would um and the, like the the caregiver will try to like regulate the the dosage gradually till the person can function without the medication do you understand so there is nothing like you have to use it for your, for a long time the only reason why one would use it for a long time like that is that you know some people don't stick to their medications you know you use it for this week and in two weeks time they will not use it again so once once they break down again and they maybe probably take them to the hospital that's when they will start it again and the cycle continues like that again so once you stick to your medication to the ones that have been given i feel that i, I believe it's going to be treated it's at least treatable do you understand so that's the truth about um antidepressants the other one here is Yes, depression is only brought on by traumatic events. <laughs> you know, and depression can actually be influenced by traumatic events, but that does not mean that that is what causes depression. The mm. truth, the true cause of depression is unknown. The you know is unknown, but there are some factors that can influence mm, and trigger that can, them. Yeah, yes, trigger. that can precipitate um, depression. I want to have that. such as um grief such as you know maybe it's, there's so many factors genetic influences you know and the likes so so an individual that um that had that experienced the traumatic event does not automatically go into depression and if that is the case the person should seek help to go and then how to them hello can you speak to me Okay. So that's for that and yes, the I think one of the okay, yes, I have one interesting one here. <laughs> People with depression are ungrateful. Ah. People with depression are ungrateful. <laughs> you know, it, like, the, when I heard about that I'm like, "Hello, okay." So, people with depression are ungrateful because they feel that they probably sad, they're probably being sad because um maybe they feel that is because they don't have this or they don't have enough of whatever they need to acquire they don't have enough of it to understand so for example when people there's this tag that goes to maybe rich people or famous people when they when they hear that okay this person is depressed ah with all the wealth he has with all the deeds and that which other thing doesn't it mean well that is not that is not what makes one feel fulfilled most times some people don't get fulfillment from that from those material um possessions to understand so being depressed is not attached to whether one is being grateful or not so depression can be influenced by yeah depression is a chronic is a mental illness is a minor mental illness you understand and do not let us because i'm saying mental illness don't make it feel like uh this really that's making me sound like <laughs> if the mental mental illness should be should be embraced like every other disease condition so don't let us shy away from mentioning it yes let us create the awareness let us keep talking about it let us let us make everyone let, let us make it normal to hear so that people with this that are suffering from this conditions will be able to freely seek for help and you know they will be treated they probably properly managed so um like people suffer from or related to mental health because if someone is um, going through cancer now they will either go through one or they will either go through anxiety depression they will go through a mental health problem if somebody is having just going in for an operation you start having panic attack you have different sorts of um, what is it called emotions so i feel mental it's health is yeah. um, sort of um is it connected to other illnesses yes yes like they're inter- intertwined they're interconnected so anyone Yes, yes, that's it. So, people that okay, so anyone that wants to go for um maybe a surgery or stuff, but that is not depression actually, you know. <laughs> that's not depression. But um, what is it called? Sorry, um, can you hear me? Yeah, go again. Go again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can tell you now. I can tell you now. I'm saying it's not a um, depression I'm like you know that whole process can be very okay. 
So they might go through maybe a, uh, what's it called? Um, some sort of um, depression. Hello, hello. And not like a long um, term something. Yes, 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 that's it. So um, in, that, in that case too, a depression needs psychotherapy, talk therapy. So at least to, to add to reduce the fear and anxiety about the about the illness. So the same the same attention as given to those conditions should be given to depression also, should be given to mental illnesses, should be given to anxiety disorder, post post traumatic stress disorders and the likes. So that um <laughs> yeah, I don't know how this 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 um examples that I'm giving are I'm bringing them on because it happened recently. I talked, I talked about them, I think about, I think last Monday or something. So we we're talking about, and I said, like I said earlier, mental, mental illness, illnesses are being treated unfairly in this part of the world because it's just like saying that um, there are categories of conditions and then this one, you don't have to, you don't talk about it because Anything, anything that's related to mental health or mental illness is going to be thought to be this, at the psychotic range. Anyone that hears mental illness like this, psychosis, which is not true, which is not true, and it shouldn't be like that. Even with people that are suffering from psychosis should not be banned, should not be treated unfair. Do you understand? Should not be treated unfairly in the community, that they should be embraced so that they will seek help. Anyone that's, that's, having, that's suffering from... Um, um, Epilepsy should should be treated, should be helped. It's just is a is a mental illness too. Do you understand? So they should they should not. We are in the age where we need to embrace the truth. We need to embrace um, knowledge, so that this will empower us to achieve to to get so many things done. Really. So um, that's what I don't know if you I don't know if anyone has any other. Have misconceptions. Someone... Any about belief? So, sorry, go on. No, you went. You wanted to read it out. So someone was saying that um, antidepressants affect moods, and she needs more explanation on how the antidepressants affect the brain. Affect the brain. Okay, maybe the person was not here when I talked about it earlier. So antidepressants don't the the influence they have on the brain. Is the fact that they increase the they like moderate the neuro the neurotransmitters the, that is the chemicals in the brain. It's just like the fuel that makes a generator work that that makes mm. a generator work that makes it function. So when 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 it goes down, okay, let's assume um, if a generator was working and then the fuel starts decreasing and it gets to a mm. level where it could not push further again, you know, it decreases. So what antidepressant does is that it adds fuel to the one that's pushing the, the generator to work. Do you understand? So there is nothing like it. it what, what was the word the person used? Um, it affects the mood. Uh, what is it called? Affect moods. No, it doesn't. They, they do not affect the mood. So what most of them do is that they regulate those, those chemicals that I, that I mentioned earlier. So if it's too low, they, they, they increase it. They increase them to a minimal level, to the optimal level of, of um, adequate functioning. Do you understand? So that's what they do. Those, those are the beliefs that people have been made to to um, embrace. So that, and that's why they shy away from them. I won't use it because it's going to make me start drooling. I won't use it because it's going to make me do this and that. I won't use it because of this. You know, those things are they are false beliefs. They are they are not they are not true. So. And if you're suffering from depression, it is a condition that needs attention, the same attention that you would give to any other condition, any other disease condition, like I mentioned, diabetes, hypertension, and the likes. So it and the same way that those ones are being treated, you know, okay, for example, hypertension is a, is a condition that needs a long-term treatment too. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you have to use the medication for a certain period of time. Network is slowing down. Okay. 
Um, apologies, the network is bad. Um, let me try inviting her back. And um, and feel free to drop your questions. And um, when she comes back on, she attend. I'm just trying to add her back. Invite her back. Sorry. Um, apologies for the network. Uh, so let me just go through some comments while we wait for Becca to come back online. Okay, yeah, just yeah, okay, no. sorry, sorry about that. Not so good. Yeah, right. the reception was bad. So you were reading out something, a question earlier. Yes, there is one. Um, there is one other one. Uh, let's see, one minute. What's the question? Is it true that depression can lead to excess weight gain? The, um, the depression, people um, experience depression in different ways. So some people, the way they cope with it is they add weight, while some lose weight excessively, like, do you understand? So that is, it happens. So it happens sometimes. So it depends, depends on the body, the individual's body chemistry. So it can happen that way. So um, sometimes that is why it's not, it's bad. It is a bad um, act to body shame people. You don't know what people are going through. Don't, don't point out whatever you see on their body. Hello, you are going lean. Hey, why are you having weight? Why are you, you are growing fat? So you don't know what is going on with them. You don't know what is going on behind what you're saying. So don't point out people's, what about what their insecurities you don't know what so those things can even trigger more can even trigger more um emotional disturbance to them do you understand so most of them can even go more 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 depressed and most times the one of the um, implications of depression is that that is when they start having because it affects three parts of the of the body it affects the mind it affects one's feeling affects the um, the behavior yes and it affects the thoughts so when it affects the feeling that's when you, you some people start feeling the way they cope with it is anger they start getting angry and excessively you know aggression sadness feeling of worthlessness hopelessness and the likes you know yeah why for behavior some people just withdraw to self so when you when you see a friend that maybe used to be jovial used to be out there all vibrant and then suddenly start withdrawing to self start staying indoor you know that that's the good time to go close to the person ask the person sometimes when you're when they are being confront, confronted they they open up are you depressed are you down it's you just talk to me. So those things, yes so you don't know who you, you you you'll be able to help at that point. And if you know that okay, this is this thing is beyond me, I can't do it. Refer the person and encourage them to seek help in a good way. Don't say don't use the funny slang like you dement, you know those things are not they are not they're not good enough. You know? So they they we people have used those slangs. They are now as common as the joke, people joke about them. You know, you dement, are you they, you are not all right, all those kind of funny comments that people pass, you know. So it should be curtailed, it should be controlled. So if at that point you know that this person is not okay, this person needs help, talk to the person, go with a good approach because don't make it worse. Don't try to. If you know you can't help the person, stay back. Refer the person mm -hmm. to someone that can help. Don't make it worse. That is a very, like I, I keep on saying that, that is a very bad idea. That is a bad way to, 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 to make them feel. So and go to them, confront them. What's going on? Do you want to talk about it? Can you text me? Can you, you know, just make them talk. If at that point you don't feel like talking, okay, fine. Just stay around. Just let them know that someone cares about me, you know, and the likes like that. So, and when they are ready to talk, encourage them to talk. And when they are talking, don't be judgmental. Oh, I feel that you just need your attention. No, that's another myth about depression. They feel that people that are depressed need attention. This one is an attention seeker. Just want people to care about. Yeah, just want people to care about him or her. Just, you know, and that's not true. It's a disease condition that cannot be. They can't choose to have depression. You, you can't choose to have this. No, mm. 
Do you understand? And the same way you can't choose to have it. You can't choose the, the times you wanted to go. Okay, this depression. I wanted to go tomorrow. No, it's not possible. And another, another misconception, another belief that people have about depression is, you know, like the way we tell when we talk to the, um, the regular Nigerian parents that, okay, be like, mommy, I'm depressed. God forbid, you're not depressed in Jesus' name. You'll pray and it'll be fine. <laughs> depression does not go that way. So sometimes the, the major treatment for depression is psychotherapy. That is talk, talk therapy. I mentioned it earlier and medication. Although what some, they sometimes can be treated with individual, those, those um, treatment regimens I talked about individually, but it works best when they are being used together. When the individual is taking medication and is going through counseling mm-hmm. session, that is therapeutic yeah, sessions. So it makes it go easier, easily. So don't just don't don't hide it under religious activities. Don't. That is what. Okay, I've seen a a, a friend that whenever it, it comes out, whenever he's within a social gathering, is all vibrant, all active. You know, is out there doing this and that. Meanwhile, this guy was battling with depression. Mm-hmm. Once he was when he came out to talk, eventually he said, whenever he gets back home, then he just goes back into the shell and he's like. He keeps wondering that, you know, it was beyond his, what he could handle. He could not help himself. So it's, he noticed that whenever he's outside, he, is, he, he, he performs well, he's all active, and people see him as hard. This, you know, sometimes you even see them as, this one cannot have a problem in this world. Mm. Meanwhile, they're battling with shit. <laughs> Pardon my, my, my language. They're battling with lots of things in there. You know, so uh, <laughs> and they need help. So if you have that friend that used to be active, this and that all okay, day, and suddenly just goes down the moon, and you know, call the person and help. Like I said earlier, call the person and talk to him or her. And for the the thoughts, as one of the symptoms I was mentioning before I digress, um, it, major major thoughts that comes to their mind is that suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideations. Because when, when an individual starts feeling worthless, starts feeling um, hopeless, like, what am I living for? Uh, network. Um. Network. Can you still hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. The network is bad. Okay. I can't even remember. Okay, I was talking about thoughts, the first yeah. aspect of the symptoms that they experience. So, the suicidal ideation, that's when they start feeling suicidal. They start... So, at that point, you can confront them by asking questions. This thing you're going that you're going through, this thing that you're experiencing, what 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 are you going through? What are you? What are your thoughts? What are your what are you feeling like? So you know sometimes when people express themselves, it makes it makes burden easier. It makes for their I don't know. It makes once they express their um, themselves, it makes this emotional burden just go down the rail. Yeah. So and then. Imagine someone that was feeling like, okay, nobody cares about me. Nobody does this and that. Start feeling like, okay, I think one person cares. So at that point, you can, you can um, pick up the information that person gives to you and then refer to the appropriate um, authority that can help. So, you know, and at that point... Um, for us here, I would like to say Africans, um, when someone is trying to open up, you're like, oh, you've been through this, you're going through this... And it's not like a competition. They are trying to counter what you are going through. They're like, oh, ah, this is what you are going through. Ah, have, you, have you seen what I've gone through? They start like trying to compare yours and that. Hello? The network is frozen again. Uh, can you hear me? Network is not nice to us this evening. Uh, Hello. Um, 
apologies people the network is a bit can you hear me now i can hear you i don't know why it's acting this way i can hear you so which uh, what did you hear last i think you were you were about saying something about some of those yeah, no i know it's up um the person might um end up um making it a, a competition that oh this is what you're going through me i've been through worse than this instead of them to just listen exactly. and tell offer a solution or just listen without um giving their opinion or telling the other person what they are going through that oh yours is not the sort of well, um downplay their own situation and make it feel as if it's nothing not just about listening and asking that oh this is it. some people turn it into something else and it doesn't encourage people to speak up network is gone bad again uh while we are waiting feel free to drop your questions and hopefully answer them in the network uh Hello, can you hear me now? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, okay you can yes. see me. I can see you now. I can see you now. All right. Let's see you now. So um you are talking about people comparing their their own previous feeling of probably sadness or low mood to actual depression. Yes, it's actually a valid point because it's what happens almost every day. So the advice I would give is that whenever you see someone that's going through this that's going through depression, don't try to you don't necessarily have to um listen to respond at that point. Just hear what the person has to say that's not the time to compare and say ah now you know sometimes ago i experienced similar experience and i'm sorry i experienced feel um similar feeling and at that point ah oh no i just moved on no we move you know that in most most times when i see those those slangs i just be like no people are going to be using them wrongly do you understand so we will not actually when when there's a problem instead of them to tackle them instead of them to deal with them they just you know when when the normal slang they hear every, everywhere is we move, move. They're just like, okay, why can't I move like every other person? Then that even becomes a problem. So is it that I'm different? Is it that I'm this and that? You know, you don't, I, I just feel that we need to be careful about so many things. We need to be careful. So that's not a good time to, to say that, okay, I experienced it at, at some point. You know, you're only even small. That, at that time, I even did this. So, and the funny part is mm -hmm. that at that time, the person's experience might have been just a low mood you understand so and meanwhile like i explained to to like just this is just going to be an addition for people that missed the earlier um the onset of the of the um of the life so i mentioned that depression is called depression like when it is persistent for a certain period of time so once it is pro when that feeling of sadness the feeling of low mood lack of um up in interest in pre previously experienced activities once it is persistent for a certain period mostly for like, from for two weeks for for starters do you understand then it is called depression it is not sadness it's not the regular sadness that you can snap out of that you can jump out of do you understand so don't compare it at that point whether you've gone through depression or not that time is not that that is not when you should and give the person your own they will just just listen let the person feel loved and heard refer if you can you can even try to help the person look up um search online okay let me let me see available maybe um non governmental organizations that give free sessions therapy sessions or those that create awareness about about depression so that we can so that I can know where to help. You know, that can even give the person the feeling of okay, I'm welcomed. Okay, this is not a problem that I need to die for. You know, do you understand? So yes, that point you gave is so valid. 
So someone said, I don't know, please can you help um, me with the question? Someone can someone get into depression without knowing it? Without can knowing it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, someone can go get into depression without knowing because even the actual cause of depression is not known. So mm. when um the yeah when precipitating factors that is the um surrounding um circumstances that can trigger depression happens and the, probably the person was not um probably aware or was not paying attention to those symptoms that you know sometimes you can be going through a certain mood without you paying attention to yourself. It is probably some people that are around that would identify that okay, you've been doing this for certain for this period of time, you've been doing this, you've not been eating well, you've not been you know. So sometimes we according to knowledge, you know, some people will just be like, Okay, I'm just sad, maybe because I'm stressed at work. It's not the, it's not the same thing as um, as stress. So one can get into depression without knowing because you just you might think you might start as the normal you might feel like okay maybe it's stress maybe because I just need to rest maybe because I just need to sleep or you know those things like that and it continues like that and some people just get used to it and they leave they want to just leave it that okay that's who I am that's my personality no it's not your personality seek help it's not your personality so that's I, I hope I've answered that question oh, very well uh, I think that's any more question? I think that's all for now. Yeah, that's it for now. I think that's some sort of encouragement, but it depends on how the message is passed across. Okay, that's a comment. Um, so while we wait for more questions, what um what would be the key message that you leave us with today in terms of this whole yeah. day? What's the uh, message we should drive home? Okay, I have enough message <laughs> for you to drive from with. So the first one I would say is that sorry, I didn't hear what you said. All of it. Oh, okay. The first one I would say is that um I, I mentioned it earlier. Don't try to make situation worse for people going through mental illness. If you know you can't help them, stay away. Like stay away. I'm laying emphasis on emphasis on it. Stay away. So the other one is that m what most most of the things that are making, especially youths, going to depression or having this funny experiences is maybe feeling of not worthy, like feeling of feeling of unworthiness, feeling like you know all these things that all these material possessions that maybe their colleagues, their mates have and they don't have access to, they start feeling like okay, am I not good enough? I'm not, see, you are enough. Embrace yourself. Enjoy your process. Enjoy, enjoy your own um, journey. Do take your steps as they come. Don't don't pressurize yourself to into um, doing whatever. So, and whenever you see that you're going through situations that um, that are beyond you, see, we are in the age where there is nothing strange again. There is no no topic that is that is not to be heard out there. Talk about it. Don't just don't, don't deprive yourself of your right. You have the right to get treated. You have the right to get help. There are so many organizations out there that are even really sure. they are giving out free treatments. They are giving out free ma management to mental illness illnesses. You understand? So don't don't cheat yourself. Don't literally don't cheat yourself. Mm. So. Network is bad thing. Um, hi. Okay, okay, can I see him now? I thought it was hanging. So, and some of the things that can improve one's mood is. Network, why, why, why? 
so sorry about the network um let me see if you have more questions wow. um i'm just going to try and add her back sorry about that and uh, hopefully the next uh, we're rounding up in about five minutes thank you for still staying here with us with the whole network issue um aside psychotherapy and drugs what other way can depression be managed um let's wait for her to come back on and um, she can take that and if not i will see what happens so we're just waiting for her um, Um, while we wait for her to come, we're actually coming to the end of the show. We have about um, seven more minutes. Um, so feel free to leave your questions. Let's interact. And hopefully her network comes back on and we can round up. And um, if not, um, uh, we'll have to say one minute. So um, our take home from all um, Becca has said today is um, there are a lot of myths around depression as we've um, all heard today. Um, and what matters most is for us to know um, what's it called the right information and not just um, conclude, oh, this is this because you're going through depression. It's not a real illness. It's a sign of weakness. Depression is just for women or any sort of myths about depression. And um, I think it's very important for us to broaden our knowledge when it comes to depression and mental health in general, because mental health can affect everyone and anyone. I keep saying it has no, um, mental health knows no age, knows no gender, knows no, it knows nothing. As long as you're human, as long as you have brain, you're breathing, you have, um, there are chances of going through uh, mental health um, issues are there. So it's very important important for us to know um, about mental health. And also, we should also look out for signs that we can help our, what's it called, family, friends, when we see that, okay, like she mentioned, um, someone um, is usually lively, but he or she is now withdrawn, doesn't eat as much as um, he or she does before, No, not even eating at all or not have enjoying things they normally do on a normal day. So we should also be very observant to see how we can help not just ourselves, but people around us. So it's very important for us to listen attentively without judging people, everyone. I know, I, I think it's safe to say everyone knows pain. Um, the pain might be different, you might know a different sort of pain, but what is there is everyone at some point has experienced pain. So it's very important for us to... Um, just be nice and kind to one another and um, listen to people when they come with um, problem, listen to them. You don't necessarily need to have the solution, but just listening to them attentively without trying to compare your life with them. Just listen and be there and give them that, um, what's it called, encouragement that, yeah, you're not in this alone. We might not know the way forward right now, but we're going to figure out something. And there is always a way we just need to look deeper. And um, I think it's, we've come to the end of the live show and I don't think we have any more. How do you also know you are depressed? What are the signs to look out for? Um, like she mentioned, um, if you are a lively person before, you are very, um, what's it called, outgoing, but you notice that, oh, um, you don't like to do things. Maybe you like to play football before, but after a while you don't do that. Um, you like to keep to yourself these days you like sort of withdraw yourself completely from what's it called people you be secretive you either don't eat well you don't sleep well or you oversleep you overeat or you don't eat at all basically things that you don't do basically things you don't do on a normal day yeah when there's a major change it's something you might not notice it at first at first but 
um, when you look closely and pay attention, you say, okay, I don't used to be like this. I don't used to be okay, it's gone on for a few days and um, it's not normal. Hi, welcome back. Hi, I really apologize for the break in transmission. I'm sorry. That joke disappointing us all the time, so it's okay. okay. <laughs> it's not even funny anymore. So, um, yeah, you're answering the question. If you can go on, please, I'll just uh, add mine. Someone was asking aside psychotherapy and what other way can depression be managed? Yes, um, you know, in, technology is advancing now, and in mental health hospitals, there is something they call electroconvulsive therapy. It I is um, a process where controlled, I don't know how to explain this right now, but you know, it is like a machine that is connected to the external part of the, like this part of the head, the temporal lobe, yeah. So, and it's, it passes controlled electrical charges to the brain. There's a way, they can't, the, the, the true, the actual process of function has not been identified. They don't, they can't describe how it works to, to relieve or to relieve depression symptoms or mental illness symptoms, yeah. But it, it controls it. So it has, been, it has been seen, it has been proven over and over again that people with chronic depression, after going through maybe first session, second session, shots, sorry, from this ECT, it is called ECT, they get better with medication. So that's another way. And the other management, supportive management that can be done to improve one's mood is exercise. When one um, does regular exercises, there is this hormone that is released. It is called endorphin. It, is, it supports one's um, mood. It regulates the mood, you understand? And another way to help oneself is to stay away from substances. I explained earlier about alcohol. If you know that you are suffering from these mental illnesses, stay away from substances. Stay away from alcohol. Do you understand? So they are antidep they are they are they have de depressive e effects. Besides that, apart from having depressive effects, just stay away from them. It is advisable. And if you know that you you are not prone, you are not prone to having them. You are not prone to having depression, especially because that's what we're talking about now. That does not give you the liberty to go and be. <laughs> having a feast on alcohol and mm. other substances so yeah stay away from them and yeah sorry someone was asking about how to identify symptoms of depression can i answer that now pardon i said someone was asking about how to identify symptoms of depression yes so i was asking if i could answer yes yeah yes. so um yeah the person probably came late so i explained it earlier there are major types of yeah, depression symptoms are divided into three parts. It affects the feeling, the behavior, and thoughts. So now, talking about the feeling, when you start having persistent feeling of sadness, guilt, feeling of worthlessness, hopelessness, you know, aggression, that's for feeling. Do you understand? For feeling, and yeah. for behavior. If you used to be, yeah, if you used to be this vibrant, active, jovial person, and then you start withdrawing to self. So that's first symptom from behavior that you start, that you should identify that, okay, this person is suffering from, probably suffering from depression. So social withdrawal, change in appetite. The person either stops eating or reduces the way he or she used to eat or start eating too much excessively. Do you understand? And sleep disturbances. Some people sleep excessively, while some find it difficult to sleep. So once you start having, yes. So for thoughts, it, which is the thought part, and I mentioned feeling, behavior, and thoughts. For the thoughts, that's when some people start having suicidal ideation, suicidal thoughts. Yes, maybe low self-esteem, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe, okay, I can't have. So it gets worse at that point, at that stage with depression too. Imagine someone that is having low mood, persistent low mood, that is, not, that is not interested in anything. So the person is going to every other thought that will become this person's head will be negative, will be negative thoughts. Do you get? So, and there will be no, there will be no means of penetration from the external because the person has withdrawn to self. So there is nothing to interrupt the flow of the person's thoughts. Do you understand? So if you are having, there are some major, um, yeah, for other symptoms are poor concentration, 
mm. poor concentration or inability. So um, yeah. some people go, yes, restlessness, irritability. You just feel irritated. So the, the, the symptoms are where, like, there are enough of it. But the major ones to look out for is um, changing, okay, lack of energy, persistent feeling of sadness. Yes. Um, change in appetite, change in sleep pattern. So once it is persistent for a period of time, once you can see it for, for two weeks, I, you should speak with a person to seek help. So that, those are the major symptoms of depression. And, you know, I was talking about children having these symptoms too earlier. Sorry, I know time is up, Abby. No, it's Let me just shift that down. Oh, okay. So for children, yeah, so for children, you know, there's this myth that I mentioned earlier that they believe that children and, or adolescents should not be depressed or they don't have depression, they don't go through it. So as a parent, when you, when you notice that your child starts withdrawing to self, starts refusing food or starts sleeping too much, so that is why it is advisable to study the, the, your child. So, or you notice that he or she starts crying excessively. You know, all those things are signs that you should look out for. And it should, that time should, should not be when you say, you're yeah, going to do your assignment, go and do this, go and sleep. But no, call the child, like embrace the child. Let the person open up, let the child open up to you. Because they actually go through depression. And it is even, it, it, get, it gets worse with children because once they are not able to express themselves properly. No but when you're, yeah, but when you, yes, but when they find you receptive enough as the mother or the father or the guardian, whatever, so once they find you, Sorry, it's breaking again. Can you hear me? Ouch. Thank you guys for being patient with us. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you now. All right, you, it was breaking for a while. Okay, okay. So... Have we answered all the questions now? Yes, you have. You have. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much for joining us and sharing your knowledge with us. We're so grateful and um, we'll keep learning from you. And um, thank you so much. I've learned a lot today and I hope our viewers as well have learned and picked one or two things from this um, IG live. So thank you so, so much. And do have a lovely evening. Thank you. You too. Don't Thank you for having me. Send them to you and see and get your response if that's fine. What is it? I can hear that. Questions afterwards on our DMs, um, we'll send them to you so you can respond. Oh yeah, I will gladly. Thank you so. Thank you very much for having me, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you've learned something and do have a lovely evening and we'll see you next on our next IG Live. Bye. Thank you.